And in this video, I'm going to share with you three secrets to what makes a successful gold and silver stacker. You don't want to miss this. I'd like to ask you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. You don't want to miss any future content that I have coming up and it's never too early to hit that like button. Now today in my pocket, I am holding a one and a half Troy ounce. It's a Canadian 2014, it's, it's a, a Fox, okay? Uh, I think is uh, appropriate for uh, our topic on this video. Uh, we need to outfox everybody. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I, I want to go ahead and share with you guys what I believe to be three top secrets to being a successful gold and silver stacker. Now, of course, there's lots of secrets. There's the, you, could, you could probably come up with 20, uh, maybe seven, five, a hundred secrets, but I'm gonna share with you guys my top three secrets to being a successful gold and silver stacker. Now, these are not in any particular order of importance or significance. I just, you know, I'm just gonna name off the top three. I'll start off with the first one that I wanna share with you guys. That is not caring about what the banks say gold and silver is worth today or caring about what they say gold and silver is going to be worth tomorrow. If you get caught up in worrying or wondering or caring about what the price, what they say, the value or the spot price is of gold and silver, I think you're going to get caught up in their game. I think you're going to get caught up uh, with hesitation and anxiety, which could ultimately lead to panic or even to making poor choices and poor decisions. My point being is that you need to try to find a way to understand why you need to have gold and silver. Now, I, I've posted, I've shared many videos uh, so if you go back, I, I share a lot of specifics as to why we need gold and silver, why we should be stacking gold and silver. But, you know, there's a lot of history books that you could also study and you could read and learn from as well as to why it's so important to have in gold and silver. But number one, you can't worry. You cannot get caught up in the, the daily constant every, every minute, every three minutes, the price going up and down. You know, I've made videos in the past where, you know, as early as uh, three, three and a half months ago, where I said that I did not care. I said, I do not care about the spot pricing. I do not care about the premiums. Now, don't get me wrong, of course, like anybody else, that's part of the challenge, that's part of the fun, getting the best deal that you can get. That's, you know, we, we all want to get the best deal. But I would not get caught up in price and what it's going to be worth someday. You've got to get a feel, you've got to understand the importance of why we need to have it. If you can overcome the anxiety, if you can overcome the hesitation, if you can overcome the worry, about what the price is at today, where it was 15 years ago, and where it's gonna be 15 years from now, if you can overcome that, you will become a successful gold and silver stacker. Here is the number two secret to being a successful gold and silver stacker. Only buy what you know you can do without forever. Meaning as in gold and silver is not a short-term investment. I think if, if you have the, now I know there's a lot of talk, everybody's talking about how gold is, is overdue to uh, rise in value and uh, you know we're seeing it kind of creeping up here a little bit. People make predictions that it's going to go over 2,000, I have, and, and a lot of people are saying it's going to get up to 2,200 here uh, by the end of this year. I think these are all good predictions. I think it's ex extremely probable that it's gonna happen. But here's the reality. So right now, gold is valued around $1,900. Depending on what gold you're getting, you may be paying almost $200 over spot. Now let's say by the end of the year, let's say if gold were to go up to $2,200, well, they're not gonna give you $2,200 for it. They're actually gonna give you a little less than $2,200 because they have to have their markup, they have to make their profit, they, they got their processing and everything else, they've got their brick and mortar buildings, uh, they, they've got expenses, right? So you're really not gonna make a short-term gain. If you do, it's, it's, it's not gonna be much. And then there's also always that risk. What if gold does not go up to $2,200? What if it stays down to $1,900? What if it goes down to $1,600? So this is why I say, do not buy gold or silver 
unless you're willing to just forget about that money, that exchange that you put into it. I just think it's a bad idea to have the notion or the intent that you're going to, like stocks or, or cryptocurrencies, that you're going to turn around and make a profit. You get a very high chance of possibly losing money in the premium. So if you're new to gold and silver stacking, try to rethink and try to reevaluate why you're buying gold and silver. Just because experts and economists out there are predicting and saying that gold is the thing to be buying right now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this should be a short-term investment. I wouldn't bet on it. Now, of course, emergencies happen. There's always something unexpected that happens. There's always going to be an accident. There's always going to be a need. Uh, maybe you lose your job. Uh, maybe your spouse loses his or her job. Now, of course, we never expect this to happen but we should always plan. And, and, and so that's why I say, just don't get caught up in over exchanging your fiat money for gold and silver. Just just buy a little here, buy a little there. You know, I, I just, I don't want to put a percentage on it. People like to put percentages on how much they should invest in gold and silver. You need to sit down and you need to evaluate your budget, what you've got coming in, what assets you have, and you're just gonna have to sit there and, and within reason and, and come up with a number yourself. And it may fluctuate throughout the month or throughout the week, so you, you just, you gotta pay attention. But you definitely don't wanna overextend your investments. Thought I'd go ahead and move the camera. There's a little more uh, action over here uh, with these uh, paragliders. For me, for myself, I can only speak for myself. I'm not a financial advisor, of course, and I, and I don't give any legal advice. But for me, I make the goal that I would never turn my gold and my silver back into a fiat system, into a currency. The only thing that I would use my gold and silver for is for uh, purchasing real estate uh, down the road, uh, food, supplies, things that I, goods that I am in need of or that my family is in need of. But like I said, for me, I've made the rule that I would never go back and exchange. If someone came to me and said that they would give me $200 uh, for an ounce of my silver, I just, I wouldn't do it. I don't have a whole lot of trust and faith in, in fiat current currency systems anymore. I would much rather be in a position where I'm able to hold onto my gold and silver for when I really do need it, or I just like the idea of passing them on to my children. Okay, the number three secret that I'm gonna share with you guys to being a successful gold and silver stacker, and that is, my friends, never, never worship your precious metals, your gold and silver. Never worship it. Uh, it's something that I see people do all the time. I see people uh, worshiping their gold and silver so much to the point where I think that they they lose good judgment in, in all other things. You know, I make no secret. Uh, I share that, that, that I am a Christian and throughout the Bible it is written in so many places about people uh, worshiping false idols, uh, people worshiping their gold and their silver and their precious things. Uh, my friends, it, you know, it's, it's easy. I, I can see how it's easy for one to fall into that trap of putting their gold and their silver above everything else. Be careful, my friends. You know, for me, I, I keep uh, my gold uh, locked up. I keep it out of sight, out of mind. Uh, I, I won't forget where I've put it. I won't forget where I store and keep my gold, but I don't like to have my gold sitting out. And, and I'm not saying that it's bad if you have your gold or your silver out on display. You know, me, like I've shared, you know, I always like to have a piece of silver in my pocket. Uh, most of the time I, I carry, I, I shared a video in the past about a specific coin that I keep in my pocket. You can go back and find it. It's easy to find. But I do have a specific, I don't have it on me right now at this moment because uh, I've, I've got this on me. But uh, I, I do have a specific coin that is special to me. It reminds me of someone uh, who's passed on, somebody who uh, I miss dearly, somebody who, who uh, was a mentor to me um, throughout my life. And, uh, but you know, every now and then I like to have a little something like this. I use this for educational purposes. I, I, I like to share with my family and friends, and I definitely have an ongoing conversation about silver uh, with my children. It's something that I hope that they will respect and it's something that they will have the desire to, to stack in someday as well. So that way when I pass it on to them, they'll know what to do with it. And if you've seen my past videos, you know that I keep some uh, silver out on my desk uh, for, for display and for, for showing on and for the making of my videos. Now, I know some of you are probably going to laugh at me. I, I wish I looked it up. I wish I Googled it before I started this video. But I'm sure most of you have seen the, uh, the, the Lord of the Ring movies. You know, that, that character comes to my mind. 
Um, I, I don't remember his name. He's got an odd, unusual name, but he's the character, the, the original owner uh, of the, uh, that ring, that precious ring. And uh, he, he obviously he loses his mind and he, he even, he, in order to obtain the ring, he kills his best friend on, on the day of his birthday. And obviously by him coveting and, and worshiping this, this golden ring so much, it uh, overtakes his soul, it overtakes his life. And then throughout the three movies, he's just following and lingering behind the rocks and the bushes, trying to figure out a way to get his hands back on his precious, right? You know, guys, I think that that depicts very well of how and what, it, what worshiping gold and silver can do to one. Now, you, you know, we see people who, who we know worship gold and silver and they get a little crazy with it. But, uh, you know, and they still look normal. They don't look like that character from Lord of the Rings. I, I hope you guys can get my, my humor in, in talking about the, this character from Lord of the Rings. But my point is, is that, uh, you know, we shouldn't worship our gold and silver. And I, I think it's easy to if we're not careful. My friends, we got to keep our heads on straight. We have to be smart. You know, if we can keep those first two rules of how to be a, a successful gold and silver stacker, I believe we will find success. Each of you and all of us, we will all find success in stacking gold and silver and will be wise. I caution you all, my friends, do not worship gold and silver. Keep it tucked away. It's, it's easy to stare at it. It's easy to uh, uh, maybe hold it too long. Keep it away. Just know the purpose of it. The purpose of it is to provide for yourself and for your family. My friends, what do you think? I'm sure a lot of you have a secret or a tip that you would like to share with others on what has made you a successful gold and silver stacker. Please share in the comments below. Uh, give us your insight. Give us your feedback. It's greatly appreciated. And once again, if you have not taken the time to subscribe to this channel, now's a great time to subscribe. Give this video a like. It helps this channel grow. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in my next video.